so dear friends topic is uh, emerging trends and technology in digital library services the innovation happens in co coinciding with the changes in the whole environment and resultant development in society in the context of libraries the innovation aligned with the development of the library itself creation of content reflective behavior of the users and in the application of various techniques and uh, technologies libraries like other organizations there no exception to the impact of new technologies they are in fact at the forefront in implementing the latest technologies which are useful in providing effective services to their clientele the fundamental role of the libraries is to disclose and disseminate information serving as the mediation of access to information with the advances of technologies libraries are relying more on information and communication technologies and the internet to fulfill their role because the internet is changing the way people obtain information as a result libraries must face with the development of ict to expand and improve their range and quality of services emerging technologies bring libraries innovative challenges concerns and opportunities for the development here these are the 10 emerging technologies used in digital library services number 1 mobile technology number 2 whatsapp number 3 quick response codes number 4 big data number 5 internet of things number 6 blockchain technology number 7 augmented reality number 8 robotics number 9 artificial intelligence and the last that is expert systems i'll discuss in brief one by one technology the first technology that is mobile based library services today's libraries have traveled from paper to paperless society and from print to the non print the environment they are transferred into digital ones e learning contributes to the library development mobile library applications opens door for libraries for myriad opportunities in the age of information on the go libraries provide a new channel for accessing information and sharing with others the compiling demand of mobile devices as one valid reason that they enable flexibility for users and libraries to access up to date information in ubiquitous way hence there is a concept called byod stands for bring your own device and access library resources this is a very good practice of students bringing their own smartphones tablets and other miniature devices to access information in ubiquitous environment is a common trend across different academic institutions let us discuss how this technology helps in digital library services this technology as you know very well it is a using very small portable devices it means to handle devices particularly smartphones and tablets it directly refer to mobile devices with a cellular or wireless connectivity and the mobile technology improves access to library resources and services for everyone wherever they are having such connectivity so come into library services what kind of library services we can provide with this mobile technologies the first and foremost service that is mobile library website 
the mobile library websites, it will work along with the traditional library websites. And uh, sometimes it may be integrated into that is a responsive way website or may be redesigned with the mobile technologies. So it is a, this is a subset of the main library websites. The next important service provided to users is mobile version of online public access catalog. In short form, it is called MOPAC. And libraries can use this mobile technology in circulation services, very importantly, in reference inquiry services, current awareness services, selective dissemination of information, distribution of EOSs, SMS alert services. Some more services, library maps and floor maps, library news, library events, library blogs. And uh, interestingly, they can provide efficiently and effectively mobile-based databases, in short form, mobile databases. This is the latest strength provided by the database vendors for the benefit of miniature devices or smartphone users, list of new arrivals, interlibrary loan, international interlibrary loan, books and article search, library hours and library tours, some of the vital library services which are provided by mobile-based technologies. Now question comes, libraries these days having traditional library services, automated library services, digital library websites, services, now question comes here, how these services can integrate or enhance into mobile library services. On the left of your screen, the services existing in different libraries. On the right of your screen, these are enhanced into mobile-based library services. For example, library website. Every library these days having their own library website or it is integrated with their institution website that can be redesigned with the help of mobile technologies like mobile website or at least they can redesign as responsive website which is compatible with the all sizes of miniature devices. Number two, library of OPAC. OPAC stands for Online Public Access Catalog. This can be, if it is accessed via mobile devices, then it is called mobile OPAC. OPAC is OPAC. If it is accessed, OPAC stands for Online Public Access Catalog, which is accessed with the help of integrated library management system as a module. The same one accessed with the help of library websites. Then it is called Web OPAC. The same OPAC accessed by mobile devices or miniature devices. Then it is called mobile OPAC. Now here, hyperlinks becomes mobile apps. Apps means applications. Barcodes becomes QR codes. All the reference and notification services become here. Mobile reference services, library corrections here, mobile library collections. All databases become mobile databases. Library instructions become mobile library instructions. Physical maps become mobile maps. Library tours become mobile library tours. Coming to the, this technology that is WhatsApp, that is these days the WhatsApp technology, so popular among the library users. 
and libraries also making use of such a wonderful technology for its uh, high tech library users that is the way the libraries are designating one of the librarians as whatsapp librarian you can see this screen understand very easily coming to that what kind of library services we can integrate with this whatsapp technology we can provide through whatsapp the very famous is access information and uh, providing sms service instant sms service mms service to its users via whatsapp is very easy because whatsapp is a very popular technology among the library users not only accessing library resources and services but also they are using for their personal academic and research here with this technology audio video services are very easy are very instantly goes to their readers and reference services are one of the important service which prominently we can provide to library users cataloging search general content search contents suggesting a purchase this is one of the very important if at all library wants to buy purchase a particular instrument that instrument simply they can put the requirements specifications in their group and all the users they can give innovative and creative suggestions for that particular the instrument for buying for library search so then new title preview this is a wonderful services we can provide with this technology and uh, more importantly image services whenever the library users wants whether it is a the static image or it is a dynamic image or maybe animated so easily libraries can send to the personalized services in the form of image services of course news and events instantly that is posting in whatsapp instant their groups library tour interactive feedback this is a very important unlike sms if at all library sending to any information to its users or its group so they can easily trace there is no need to send back to that feedback automatically they find out to text with the blue color now coming to the third service qr codes qr stands for quick response codes based library services the image of the library as an imperious vault wherein librarians serve as the gatekeepers guiding for patterns through matrix stacks has become outdated today's libraries need to take a new channel to provide their resources services and research tools to today's generation and stay tuned with users therefore it is crucial for librarians to understand mobile devices and uh, mobile technologies and provide services through them in this context the qr codes is a very important as you know when and as a practicing librarians and teachers and others you are using this codes for general purpose the best example is paytm the pick response code is a basically is a two dimensional code it is holds information in both horizontal and vertical but whereas the barcode only holds one dimensional that is horizontal and uh, the barcode if it is we have to scan with the very very the limited uh, the length that is a maximum 10 cm so we have to scan within 10 cm but whereas 
this QR code from any place, any corner, 360 degrees. So librarians are implementing QR codes in both their physical resources and uh, the online resources in all types of libraries. Let me explain about uh, the brief description, anatomy of barcode and QR code. On the left of your screen, the, that is a barcode. On the right of your screen is QR code. The QR, this barcode is only provides the linear information and it provides maximum numbers and the maximum capacity of a barcode is 20 digits. On the right side, you can see the QR code. It is uh, storing, if it is a numeric data, 7,089 7, characters in single QR code. If it is an alphanumeric data, 4,296 characters. If it is a binary digits, 2,953 bytes. It is a kanji code or any other codes. It will store 1,817 characters. Where is 20 characters and where is 7,089 characters? 7,089 characters means you can save two A4 size articles of 10 pages. So in a single QR code, you can send to users like two articles, sometimes one article, full text. So these QR codes implemented in digital library services in many ways and means. And a few examples here, it is mainly these codes are for SMS alerts and MOPAC, emails and phone numbers, particularly reference and library resources, events and URLs. Of course, this is not but the least, it is uh, the linking all the social networking sites and academic social networking sites, blocks of the library. Let us see this one, integrating this one, all the library services into the codes, that is QR codes, like library audio tour, group study room schedulers, marketing and promotional library materials, linking from print to electronic library holdings, providing an electronic alternative to physical books, promoting online audio video materials, embedding video help, bringing external resources into library, finding appropriate help, taking catalog record with you. These are the some of the, the services prominently provided by the different academic libraries. Let us see the third, fourth technology that is big data. Big data is rapidly increasing on five fronts of volume, velocity, variety, veracity, and value. This data is gathered, processed, and analyzed in the big data ecosystem, which has been selected for realization and visualization of the final content personalized content, aware recommendations to the users based on his or her interest. These days, libraries are confronted with an enormous amount of structured and unstructured data. Library work no longer focuses on the books, journals, and catalog data, but rather all manner of unstructured and structured data and the forms, text, metadata, images, audio, video, research data, 3D digital copies and software. Therefore, the use of big data seems to be a relatively new field in libraries at the moment. Therefore, with the help of big data technologies, new value added library services can be created and providing opportunities for data services, which are expanding in libraries and librarians 
in cataloging, archiving, research, and reference skills remain especially suited for the provision of big data services. You can see here on the screen, so the big data is the digital data that may be analyzed computationally to reveal patterns, trends, and associations, especially relating to human behavior and interactions. And educational institutions are in a period of transition how they deliver their library services. In principle, three main fields of application can be distinguished for big data, data as sources, data analysis, that is collecting, cleaning up, integrating and processing, and data visualization means presentation and communication. The application, Possibilities range from improving the library services or creating completely new services to marketing measures, developing new data formats for library data for a more effective exchange, providing library data for data analysis for scientists, data standardization, data modeling, data visualization, and user behavior studies. Look at this sum of the applications of big data technologies in library services to optimize the collections or books, collections means books or journals to generate better search results and to make recommendation for the books. Number two, to produce a Google-like knowledge card based on the reformatted library data and the card can be linked to the from the outside in order to achieve interoperability on the web. Example, that is British Library Studies, the link to data of the library collections and model the people, events, places which are related to holding in the library. Number three, automation of library circulation systems and development of WorldCat. This is by OCLC. Number four, for efficient creation of metadata schemes, taxonomies, designing standard retrieval methods. Number five, to describe a massive volume of both structured and unstructured data. Number six, to provide individual pieces of information to users as a whole or in parts for data mining or using other data analysis methods. Number seven, for data mining purpose. One is using data stored in the library and another is using data collected during the process when users use the library services. Number eight, to make better relationship among the co-authors, citations, geolocations, dates, named entities, subject classifications, institutions, and to facilitate greater improving overall experience and user satisfaction of the library services. And uh, to facilitate greater interoperability to adopt new methods of content delivery to substitute traditional face-to-face -face library in generating personalized recommendations and present in an innovative way with the accessible system throughout the data integration. Dear friends, big data affects libraries both directly and indirectly. The direct effect is in the use of big data tools to analyze big data sets of libraries. And it allows the automation of several real-time library services, which help to improve library services. Indirect effect is through the library users who are increasingly using big data in their research. Hence, big data is finding applications in data mining, data curation, and research data management. The another technology that is IoT stands for 
internet of things internet of things is emerging as the wave in the development of the internet it has taken a great leap forward from internet of communications to internet of things making it possible to connect objects and transfer data with or without human intervention and facilitate several possible services and innovations that may become available as a result of an increasingly interconnected network environment so the kind of in simple words iot is a computing concept that describes a future where every day physical objects will be connected to the internet and be able to identify themselves to other devices the objects both living and non living with sensors and having network capabilities which are going to interact with each other and also with the people using the internet so iot is a comparatively young idea and it is yet to make inroads in library some ideas are floating around library services these are the some of the uses in libraries number 1 to provide virtual to come patterns orientation number 2 to help in shelf guides from patterns favorite list and online late fee payment to make available of various missions to provide alerting services efficiently maintenance of temperature and humidity in the stack rooms controlling dust get away from the pests and rodent etc in the library for locating books on bookshelves to help libraries to manage light security systems fire fighting systems performing air monitoring to improve work quality and efficiency in libraries real time messaging services to providing better ventilation to perform book monitoring registering inventory self checking self check out and detecting automatically as well as an efficient manner therefore iot and emerging area to combine data that might be produced consumed or generated from iot devices to provide innovations in digital library services the data produced by inventory control over libraries might in fact help collection developers better understand how users interact with the physical spaces and what user engagement looks like in collections and service points at a pervasive level behind assessment a deeper insight into the actual use of library space will allow libraries to tell the story of space usage better and make decisions based on evidence by incorporating lit lot with radio frequency identification devices then possible to introduce the concept of building automation with the help of wireless sensors and rfid tags and wireless sensors networks the next technology that is blockchain technology blockchain technology uses a distributed data database means multiple devices not connected to a standard processor that organizes data into records that is called blocks that have cryptographic validation and time stamper it is linked to previous records so that they can only be exchanged or changed by those who own the encryption keys to writing the files so how 
this technology used by libraries of course this technology is still in its infancy in library services for example san jose state university school library they are excellently using blockchain technology applications in their libraries how they are using they are using building an enhanced metadata system for building centers in protecting digital first say rights connecting to a network of libraries and connecting support community based collections support peer to peer sharing host partnerships across centers and it is giving badges for skill training so coming to the another relevant technology these days that is augmented reality dear friends you know this virtual reality covered by artificial intelligence but uh, this augmented reality in short form it is called ar is a direct or indirect live view of a physical real world environment whose elements are augmented by computer generated perceptual information ideally across multiple sensory modalities including visual auditory and haptic it is an interactive technology that superimposes a computer generated image on a user's view of the real world thus providing a composite view the increasingly popularity of smartphones has prompted the development of augmented reality mobile applications in libraries number 1 it is enables users to see the information that cannot be automatically detected with their senses two users can improve their performance in carrying out their task through the help of information provided by virtual objects number 3 integrating ar in books dynamic content is presented that provides a bidirectional flow of communication number 4 this technology act of reading can turn into an active task for the reader as the later can learn more about a particular context number 5 it can be used as a learning tool number 6 images from books can be overlaid with the digital data number 7 the concept of augmented books provides additional illustrations and reflection for a deeper understanding of the context through other purposiveness transforms a book by supplementing it with digital information in the form of additional videos and animations and helpful overlay information and all the related concepts it provides projects information more naturally and intuitively to students by providing more realistic environments for learning purposes the mutanis provide virtual objects and backgrounds which are simultaneously projected on the real world to create the sensation of immersion number 11 is easily merge various types of content such as text audio video and three dimensional video media to reduce the opacity of information number two one is virtual information that are used in ar applications of geo located metadata three dimensional enhancements and visual or audio or is like context aware systems 13 information can be stored according to various conceptual parameters the direction objects can focus in time and in you know or use it to synchronize and augment a particular concept with digital information 
Last but one, simple means of interaction creates a new model of learning which is easily used by even my students who have no experience in computers. The last AR application make it possible to filter information, present information overlays, relatively to the user's current context. Coming to the another technology that is robotics. The fourth industrial revolution is considered to be the outcome of the convergence of several technologies in industrial operations. And these technologies are not limited to robotics, artificial intelligence, cloud computing, big data, linked data, 3D printing, etc., which are integration of technology with the human body. So the field of Robotics is often described as the subfield of artificial intelligence that is considered with the perceptual and motor tasks. So now coming to the, there are many services which will be either carried out by one robot or they will result from the cooperation between several robots allowing performing complex tasks. Some of the applications of robotics in digital library activities are, one, comprehensive access to printed materials. In short form, it is called CAPM. CAPM is to build a robotic on-demand and batch scanning system that will allow for real-time browsing of printed material through a web interface. Number two, searching and analyzing a full text generated from the images. Number three, chatbots is also known as digital assistants, virtual agents, or intelligent agents. These are computer programs that can simulate an intelligent conversation through text, speech, or potentially through an embedded representation developed to answer reference queries and fit patterns of mobile communication among students and build on understanding of user needs from existing chart services. Number four, automated customer services representatives are gaining popularity, although they are used mostly in novelty gimmick such as e e-gain chatbots, or answer very simple questions and to direct users to the websites online, frequently asked question files, such as the Royal TSB Help Centers, a robot with the arm, with some degrees of freedom, which will be able to find out the book with the required tag, and then pick it and place it on the table. Clever bot is a chartboard web application that uses an artificial intelligence algorithm to have conversations with humans. Using sensor data, a robotic arm detects the books, picks that book from a source location and places at the desired location. That way, a missing book is not a lost book and it is easily can be traced so books can be identified using the pre-programmed data in the system and which helps the maintain the books in order. Data from the library's bibliographic and holding records to retrieve from the storage and uh, deliver books that have been requested by the users. The library and robot consists of a manipulator which can recognize and manipulate books and mobile platforms which can localize itself and navigate using ambient RFID tags embedded in a flow. So the last one is the automated storage and retrieval systems. In short form, it is called ASRS. ASRS claims to allow readers access to their desired material within minutes. So this is the one of the wonderful services provided by the 
Mansueto Library, University of Chicago. It is interesting to note that an experimental robot helps a library user find the location of the book he desires or she desires. The robot would understand the voice of the user and check the catalog to find the book, look for RFH type to take the user to the book. The next, the last technologies, number nine and 10, artificial intelligence and expert systems. Dear friends, today, everything emerging application is built on using mission learning. And it is quite apparent that much of the applications we run today come with intelligence. Today, AI is commonly seen with finding information or answers either through search engines or through personal assistants like Siri, Google Personal Assistant, or Amazon Echo. So the term artificial intelligence, you know very well. And uh, of course, it is a conjures images of robots and taking talking computers. It is a wide variety of techniques, programming, styles, and devices. But now how this technology helping in digital library services? So let us discuss a few of them. So AI is used to empower women in accomplishing otherwise tedious or difficult tasks. Rare existing examples in libraries worldwide, which uses several concrete ideas for implementing artificial intelligence in libraries or many libraries have begun to move away from library catalogs to towards online discovery systems. This allows, in theory, for patrons to discover items that would have previously been inaccessible, replicating in part of experience they get from searching multi-format inferent interfaces like Google. Number two, AI yeah, can identify rarely used items, which will help reduce storage costs and then efficiently move these items to the location where they are most likely to be used. The possible future of storage also points to how libraries can begin to prepare for the implications of the AI, even as they acknowledge that the full implications of the AI are impossible to predict. Three, the machine learning model introduces streaming algorithms to produce process data and it provides trained responses that also factor in previous interactions, word relationships, and vector analysis. Number four, that is a web designer. Up to update website as many times as you like until you get it just right, all the while contributing to the mission's learning. AI systems that can easily process and reconfigure huge data sets of information. Another successful experiment that is in place in 2006 is where the papers are such semantically in the database that is called semantic scholar and retrieved using artificial intelligence. It uses data mining principles and natural language processors and compares articles to jets and filter out the items that better align with the researcher's needs. Number seven, that is citations and relevant data. In each article is the base information that is being used. Currently, this facility is limited to the publications in the field of computer science and medicine and uh, its allied subjects. And uh, in future, it goes to all subjects. And uh, the last but one is the expert systems. This is uh, powered by AI, it will work as a substitute for reference library and examples. Many, but few of them are a research, pointer, online reference assistants, answer man, flexes, so many more. And these are used particularly in legal, law libraries, and medical libraries, and convert ASCR into highly structured rules. 
and uh, automate cataloging through expert systems, application of expert systems in classification, like that uh, the application of expert systems in indexing, for example, med index, application of expert systems in acquisition, for example, monograph selection advisor, it is a pioneering effort in building library collections. And Cybernix for libraries is a fully customizable chartboard that works automate routine and low level inquiries currently handled by librarians, largely to guide library users to a reference suitable source when a library is not available to help them for reference referral systems cover knowledge as a whole in the coverage of a general reference library while others are restricted to highly specialized domain. Dear friends, today's libraries are undergoing a rapid transformation and they need to remain reinvented and reposition themselves to fulfill the needs of generation X, generation Y, and generation Z users who are technologically savvy, a new type of service development may require rethinking the library's overall mission with a focus on new information technology, smart systems, improved traditional and non-traditional library services, and the user's library experience, as well as enhance opportunities for student learning. The revitalized libraries can leverage the new technologies and uh, other advantages of the digital era and facilitate the creation of knowledge, support, innovation, and help users become smart users. So, dear friends, emerging technologies provide librarians with a unique opportunity to substantially enhance user centric services and provide collaboration between libraries and their clients. They leverage the new technology to facilitate creation of knowledge, support innovation, and help citizens become more smart citizens. So in conclusion, there is no doubt that emerging technologies in library services play a pivotal role in information dissemination and management as well as survive in these libraries on the go environment. Thank you very much. My special thanks to Dr. S.P. Agarwal, Principal and Director, TLC Ramanjan College, Jelly. And the man behind this course is Dr. Rajesh Singh, University Librarian and Co-Director and all the conveners, organizing team, and all the online participants. This is, if you have any questions, if you wish to send, this is my email, and you wish to talk to me, this is my mobile number. Thank you very much.